Hello and welcome. This is Anka Johnson and I'm happy to be here with you today to share a little bit about squashing fear and gaining confidence. Another way of saying to de-spook you. So we talk often about de-spooking our horse. What about de-spooking ourselves? What about working with uh, and on ourselves, the, the rider component of the horse and rider team? So if you have Oh, I'll share a little example with you here. Some of the things that I hear a lot of my coaching clients share with me and that have come to me that they've wanted to be able to resolve and have since been able to do so are things like being a rider who is coming back into riding after being off of the horse for many, many years. Uh, I myself was one of those older riders coming back to riding at the age of 35 after not having ridden since about the age of 22. So it definitely was daunting and it was a completely different way of looking at things when I came back to riding. Um, if, you are, if you are frustrated with not being able to move forward, with not being able to do the things that you want to be able to do with your horse or with the horse that you're riding, things as, as simple as going out on the trail and walking and trotting and cantering and feeling confident the entire time, confident enough to enjoy the scenery and enjoy the horse as opposed to worrying about what might happen or what if something springs out. If you feel that you might be afraid of the judgment that others might pass upon you as you're riding in an arena uh, or sharing some of the things that you do with your horse, fear not because there are certainly things that we can do to help you with that judgment and to, and to work on um, not feeling that way. So again, that you have the freedom of being able to ride your horse and be in the moment when you are truly riding and that's, that's absolutely wonderful. If you go into your riding and you don't have any kind of a plan, you don't know exactly what you're going to do, and you keep finding yourself back in the same place over and over again, and that gets very frustrating after a while, and you just find that you're not advancing, we can certainly help with that. So there's a myriad of other things that could bring you here to be watching this video, but I just wanted to give you a few of those examples. Another example might be cantering or going faster on your horse, jumping, uh, being in a show ring, getting the ribbons. All of these things are things that we can have fear over and we can work, we can have a lack of confidence with. So I wanted to show you just a couple of quick things here and again I thank you for being here with me. Um, our horses don't, well, let me rephrase that. Our, uh, we don't ask our horses to take big unrealistic steps, do we? No, we honor their thresholds, or we try to at least. Sometimes we miss a few, but we try to. So what is it about us that forces us to um, not honor that same thing with ourselves? For, so for an example, it would be to push yourself through a fear just because you felt that um, maybe again you were being judged or maybe you had become frustrated enough that you wanted to push yourself through. Typically what happens in those situations is it typically ends in, I don't want to say disaster, but it ends in uh, something an old school teacher used to say, it ends in a wreck. So um, the wreck can be emotional, the wreck can be physical, it can be a myriad of other things. So what if, why is it that we ask ourselves to go from point A, where we're starting at now, to point B, or 0 to 100, we can do A, B, we can do 0 to 100, why do we ask ourselves to go from here to here? So if our goal is to canter, why do we ask ourselves today, I'm going out to the barn, and even though I haven't cantered in months or years or never, I'm going to canter today. And then you force yourself. And what happens? You lose your confidence. Maybe it doesn't go very well because your horse can feel that you are really apprehensive. So why don't we do it in small steps? Why don't we take small steps? This is what we do with our horses. We don't ask them to do a canter pee off just out of the blue, we ask them to start out by bending properly in a circle, by tracking properly in the circle, 
and then asking them to go into smaller and smaller circles, going from a 50 meter to a 20 meter to a 10 meter circle, making sure that the canter is balanced, all of those components that go into a pee-off. But we certainly don't ask for it in one day. So this is one of the things that we'll be talking about, and I'll be sharing with you how to be able to take these steps and feel great about them. And not only that, succeed in what you want to succeed in in a very short period of time. The other thing that I just want to kind of share with you here a little bit is your comfort zone, which is in the center here, CZ, your comfort zone. So when we step outside of our comfort zone, what happens is if we step just a little bit outside of our comfort zone, it allows us to kind of feel what it's like out there, to be able to uh, deal with the things that might come up. But then we're close enough to our comfort zone that we can retreat back. And a lot of us know this in the horse world as approach and retreat. Again, typically what we do is we don't step out of our comfort zone, we leap out of our comfort zone. And by leaping out of our comfort zone, we cause a lot of discomfort. And because of that, we don't only retreat back into the comfort zone, but we're afraid to even take one step out. If you find yourself as one of those folks, maybe you've been trying to canter um, outside of the arena, or maybe even just in the arena, um, and you just freeze up, you, 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 uh, you, you completely, um, freeze when you try to do that, um, you might be in this category, but we can certainly do something about it. And again, it's something that we can do and you can do um, very simply using my seven secrets to conquering your fears and gaining confidence. So our horses are like our own crystal balls. What they will do is they will tell us where we're at and what it is that we could be doing in order to help ourselves. And they do that just by sharing with us what they need. So again, if we listen to our horses, if we watch them, if we truly observe, we'll get a lot of answers just from them. We can think of them as our own little crystal ball. So what I'd like to do for you is I'd like to share my seven secrets for conquering fear and what I like to call squashing fear, gaining confidence. Uh, gaining confidence um, and that is going to liberate you and open you up to an unlimited amount of choices that you can have in what you do with your horse. Do you want to do competitive trail riding? But right now you can't because you're not comfortable on the trail, you're not comfortable in new places. Maybe you want to go to a show but you're so afraid of the judgment that might happen from not only the spectators but also the judge. Maybe um, you, again, you want to uh, go into some of the levels of dressage and work on that, or maybe do some jumping. All of these things are things that you would be able to do when you know these seven secrets that are going to help you with your confidence. So the first is a road map. You need to have a plan. You need to know where you're going. The second is your belief system. Your belief system is key. If you don't have a strong belief system, if you truly don't believe within yourself that you can do certain things, then you've stopped before you even gotten started. So we talk about your belief system and we work on that. Being able to do visualizations, positive visualizations. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how to worry? Do you know how to picture things that could go wrong? Have you ever thought about what if? If you've been able to do any of those things, then you're able to do visualizations that, on the other hand, are much more positive in nature for you and will actually lead you towards that confidence and success. The other part that we work on is the physical you. This doesn't mean that you need to be Barbie thin, not at all, but it does mean that you need to be able to be balanced in your seat, you need to be able to be aware of your body, where is your body, what is your body doing? And we work on that so that you are in concert with what your horse is trying to do. You cannot ask your horse to be balanced without you being balanced yourself. The next thing that we look at is the passive leadership that you can provide to your horse. Your horse is looking for a leader. And if you have the skills of a passive leader, you will be able to do that and give that to your horse, which will consequently allow your horse to feel very confident around you and, and a lot of the things that might be happening now might not happen at all anymore. The other things that we work on is we work on something called taming your gremlin. 
So my gremlin tends to sit right here on my right hand shoulder. And what my gremlin tends to do is my gremlin tends to speak little sweet nothings in my ear that certainly don't help me. He uses some of my past fears. He, uh, he, he challenges anything that might be a positive belief. But the great thing is that by taming your gremlin, what you can do is you can uh, work on um, being able to flick that gremlin off your shoulder and move forward with whatever it is that you would like to work on. And lastly, but certainly not least, we also help you to get the big picture view, what I call the view from the observer. So we help you to look at your situation in a much bigger uh, picture so that you can truly see what actually is and what might be fabricated in your mind or what, might, what you might be thinking but truly isn't the truth. These are seven secrets that are going to get you to be as confident as so many of the other people who have already been coaching with Natural Solutions by Anka and who have been squashing fear for a long time now. So stop limiting yourself and start liberating yourself. Don't let this year go by as another year where you become frustrated and you don't achieve your goals. Start moving now. So in order to be able to be confident and move forward as an equestrian. What I would like for you to do is I would like to invite you to speak personally one-on-one -on -one with me. I'll take you through a 45-minute coaching demo and we can see if coaching with me is the right thing for you. With Squash Fear Gain Confidence, we have this in a group format and it's fantastic because what you have is you have the collaborative efforts of other people just like you who are struggling with things just like you are or maybe things that are just a little bit different that you all will be able to give each other perspective on and solutions for. And most of the people who work with me in a group format remain lifelong friends and they continue chatting and continue uh, riding together even in some cases if they're not too far apart geographically um, and they continue to squash their fears and support each other. It's a fantastic family of people to become uh, part of. So again I, I uh, thank you very much for your time and I hope that you start squashing fear and gaining confidence and despooking yourself this year so that you can have the ride of your life. Thank you.